I'm Ian Dealey. I'm Professor of Differential Psychology at the University of Edinburgh. I study people's differences in intelligence. And here are 10 things that I think are quite interesting about scores on intelligence tests. One, there is such a thing as general intelligence. That is, people who tend to score well at one type of thinking skill tend to do well on all of the others. About 40% of people's differences can be accounted for by general intelligence. Second, with regard to age, some things do just as well in older age as they do in youth, like general knowledge and vocabulary. However, some types of memory and reasoning and the speed with which we think tend to go down on average as we grow older. With regard to sex differences as our number three, men and women are equally intelligent. Their average scores are the same. However, men are slightly strange because you get more of them at the bottom and more of them at the top of the scores. We don't know why. Genetics and environment, they both contribute to people's intelligence differences. However, the genetic contribution does not stay the same throughout the life course. When we're young, genetics contributes to a relatively small amount of people's differences in intelligence. But by the time you get to adulthood, about two thirds of people's differences in intelligence are down to genetic factors. It's interesting, as there are number five, that people who score well on complicated intelligence tests are also good at relatively simple things. That is, even something as simple as pressing a button in response to a light going on, people who score better on intelligence tests are faster at that kind of simple thing. That might indicate there's something different about their brains. And let's look at the brain as number six. If we look at a big sample of people, we find there's a small tendency for people who score better on intelligence tests to have bigger brains and better connected brains. Let's now look at some of the consequences of being more or less clever. As our number seven, we find out that people who score well on intelligence tests when they're young tend to get more educational attainments, they tend to go into more professional jobs, and they tend to go upwards in social class compared to their parents. As our number eight, this is a relatively new discovery, we found in the 21st century that people who have got better intelligence test scores when they're aged 11 tend to be healthier, tend to have later development of illness, and tend to live longer. These are some remarkable studies that have studied people when they were young and followed them up into old age, even into their 80s. As our number nine, there's a discovery that over the 20th century, intelligence test scores were rising generation after generation. Nobody knows yet whether this is an actual rise in intelligence or just people getting better at intelligence test scores. It's called the Flynn effect. Again, we don't know why it occurs. And our last thing is that when you ask lots of psychologists about human intelligence differences, they can actually agree about some of the major factors and I've told you some of them. These things and more are described and discussed in my Intelligence, a very short introduction out now in second edition with Oxford University Press.